you. We fight for that itch. Rarely do I see any American Italians eating in here. But I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown, I amuse you. The quality that you for leave us. Yes! 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 Hey, welcome to Real Genius. I am Chris Wagner, culture critic of the Dallas Morning News. And I'm Robert Wolanski, the kindergarten teacher at the Dallas Morning News. The kindergarten cop of the Dallas Morning News. You know they're making a kindergarten cop too? We're, we're, all, we're already off track. Did you know yeah. that? Uh, I'd heard something to that effect, yes. With Dolph Lundgren, I think. That is tragic. That's really I look sad. forward to doing a Real Genius on that. But we talking about school, going back to school. Well, kindergarten cop, see that all That's ties true, it's true. So yeah, the, 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 look, I, you, uh, you School saw, movies. School you saw movies. American Ultra. I did. I was going to see it, ended up going to the Ranger game instead. Wouldn't trade that for anything in the world. You liked American Ultra. I did like Some American Ultra. Go see that. I would say if you like a good, violent stoner comedy, then definitely check out. It's only 96 minutes. And it's only 96 minutes. It's Yeah, it's really, it, it, go, it gets in there and does its business and, and <laughs> gets out and you have time to get a snack afterwards. And it's, it's I'm, a lot of fun, actually. I'm very... Looking forward to seeing it. All right, but back to school, Robert. Yes. Do you have a child going back to school? I do, back to seventh grade. I remember, uh, it's funny, this is his second year in junior high. And I guess kind of why I wanted to do back to school movies is because I, before he goes to school, I get those back to school jitters on his behalf. You get nervous about being bullied in the like hallways. The, oh my God, absolutely. I have the worst memories of everything up until the last day of 12th grade. So yeah, it's I hated. You were like the misfit intellectual Jewish kid. I was just the only Jew. There you go. In DISD, my DISD <laughs> school. I did not go to Hillcrest. <laughs> I was the only Jew at TJ. So yeah, I did. Uh, I had, uh, but I I, I dropped uh, Harry off at school, and I get real sort of the, those first day, first week of school jitters on his behalf. I remember what it was like. You were anxious. You were excited. Scared. Terrified. Um, but you know, seventh grade, uh, junior high means you're now sort of in the middle, which is a weird place, also. Yep. So, yeah, I, I, that's why I've always maintained my love for high school movies, especially um, because the emotions are so exaggerated. Everything you feel when you're in school uh, is times a thousand. Yeah, every love is the most devastating, brutal heartbreak right. ever. Exactly. You'll never love anybody else. I mean, every like, argument you have, every, is humi every, every humiliation. Yeah, every, every humiliation is the thing that's going to scar you, mark you, and define you for the rest of your life. Yeah, it, gets, absolutely. it gets better, kids. Not really. It's just, you just get angrier. Well, I'm going to go first with my yeah, back-to-school so. movie, because my back-to-school movie, we're each doing one, is called Back to School. How about that? It's actually uh, it fits the theme perfectly. This it was, just seems like a give up. I'm this not was, lie. The, was the first thing I thought of. <laughs> this, yeah, I said let's do Back to School movies. Back uh, to you mean school. Back to school? This, so this was a heavy favorite, heavy rotation <laughs> player in young Wagner movie watching because I was I've always been a Rodney Dangerfield fan. And Easy I think, Money. And this is the Easy Money is just not a very good movie no, though. Although not. it is out on Shout Factory now. Um, this was the movie that that I thought captured Rodney. This is the the one movie. I mean, he's he made up you know Caddyshack. He's a lot of fun. He's a lot of fun in a lot of movies. But this was the vehicle for Rodney, and I love the idea that he's able to. I like how you call him Rodney. He's able. To, he's my buddy. Yeah, no respect, no respect. Um, he's. I love the fact that he's able to buy his way into college, and he goes there because he wants to be there with his son. It's, it's, right, it's played by the sweet. very not good actor. Keith Gordon. He went on to be a pretty good director. Good though. director, terrible actor. Right. So, and you have the, you have the great Burt Young um, as, as Rodney's He's muscle. He's fantastic. You have the great Sally Kellerman. Yes. But most important, you have the great Sam Kinison. And that's the... Oh, uh, uh, wait. Well, don't uh, forget about Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. Yes. Also, young Robert Downey Jr. Pretty awesome as well. Uh, but we're going to watch the scene uh, with Sam Kinison's history teacher giving Rodney and the class a little lesson on the Vietnam conflict. <laughs> Take a look. So why don't we dive right in by interpreting one of the easiest events in the last 20 years of American history. Now, can someone tell me why in 1975 we pulled our troops out of Vietnam? The failure of Vietnamization to win popular support caused an ongoing erosion of confidence in the various American but illegal Saigon regimes. Is she right? 
Because I know that's the popular version of what went on there. And a lot of people like to believe that. I wish I could, but I was there. I wasn't here in the classroom, hoping I was right, thinking about it. I was up to my knees in rice paddies with guns and Edwards going up against Charlie, slugging it out with him while you were back there partying, putting headbands on, doing drugs, listening to the <laughs> Beatle albums. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, hey, Professor, take it easy, will you? I mean, these kids, they were in grade school at the time. And me, I'm not a fighter, I'm a lover. <laughs> One of the great scene steals in movie history. See, I haven't seen the movie in a long time. Uh, that piece, anyway. I, I'll catch the end of it for five stop, minutes. Stop. I don't have to hear that scene <laughs> for hilarious. it to crack me up. I, I remember everything about how brilliant the slow burn, her answer, <laughs> the deadpan way she delivers. And that we didn't have time to see Rodney's response about the Korean War, in, right. in which he just explodes, like, like, like Sam Kinison did. Rest in peace. Sam Kinison, uh, it's back to school. What do you got? What, what man, Rodney school. Dangerfield, Rod in Hell? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that too. he's dead too. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Rodney <laughs> as well. But Sam, well, Rodney lived a long, fruitful life, though. <laughs> he did. Sam was kind of a, a young, tragic. Yet again, you've given yeah. Rodney Dangerfield no respect. <laughs> no respect, no respect. So, uh, look, there's a million movies I was going to pick here. Everything from little kid movies all the way uh, through um, Brick, Days of Confused. Um, I, it, High school movies are my jam, basically. They, I, I have seen Dazed and Confused, I think, and I, I've said this here more than any other movie I've ever seen. You like stay up late watching She's All That like every, every weekend, right? I'm not a big She's All That fan, but I'll tell you, I like Mean Girls a lot. Mean Girls is good. I think Mean Girls is a great back to school movie, because I think Mean Girls goes to that thing we were talking about earlier, about the fact that this is where every little thing is put under that magnifying glass and seems enormously important. Heather's is the same way. I mean, these are all sort of in the same genre. And the movie that you chose actually does that in its own way. Yeah, so I well. chose Fast Times at Ridgemont High, which I have to admit uh, is one of my favorite books. The Cameron Crowe book uh, on which the movie's based is an extraordinarily great book. If you've not read it, it's really hard to find. It's out of print. Uh, I found a copy at half price years ago for like five bucks. I think it goes on eBay for a couple of hundred now. Wow. Why is it out of print? I you, don't understand. Would, I've never understood why it's out of print. The movie's so popular. I've never understood why the book is out of print, but it's an extraordinarily great book, and it's very, it's weirdly faithful to the movie. Um, but I, I, I think Fast Times is just one of those movies that got it right about high school because it doesn't candy coat everything. I mean, it's it's full of sex. It doesn't candy coat anything. Well, yeah, it's full of sex. It's full of drugs. There's an abortion. I mean, it's about the consequences of being a teenager and the, the things that go right and the things that go terribly, terribly wrong and how every girlfriend is the most important girlfriend you'll ever have, uh, every, how every uh, football game is the most important game you'll ever play. I mean, I think it's just an extraordinary piece of work. Plus, Damone was the reason I became a ticket scalper in the first place. Well, uh, Jeff Spicoli is the reason I smoke pot every day. Well, there you go. Wait. Huh? Let's so watch anyway, the uh, trailer. So I, look, I want to show the trailer, and let me just say this: I think the trailer for Fast Times at Ridgemont High. I'm not sure you can get away with it now unless you put a as a red band. I mean, it is kind of very clear about what is about yeah. to take place in Fast Times at Ridgemont. Parental High. discretion is advised for this trailer. So here, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, directed by the great Amy Heckerling. Universal Pictures presents everything you always wanted to do in high school with everyone you always wanted to do it with. Hey, bud. <laughs> Let's party. They're the students of Ridgemont High. Uh -huh. Brad Hamilton, the fast food king. I shall serve no fries before their time. It says 100% guaranteed, you moron. Mister, if you don't shut up, I'm going to kick 100% of your ass. Charles Jefferson. A man with a mission. Oh, gnarly! Linda Barrett, not exactly the girl next door. Awesome! Totally awesome! And Jeff surfs up Spicoli. People on moods should not drive. So just in that trailer alone, we see Sean Penn, we see <laughs> Forrest Whitaker, Judge Reinhold, Judge Reinhold, Jennifer Jason Lee, Phoebe Cates, Phoebe Co. Oh, we'll save the best for last. There, it's like it's it's very much like Days of Confused. I mean, it's a lot of uh, it's a high school movie in which a lot of really young actors in their first gigs um, uh, come to our uh, collective cinematic consciousness. Yeah, and it, you're right about the pain too. I mean, it's a funny movie. 
Um, it, it's really fun to watch still, but it really does get the humiliation and the agony that can come with being a high school student. Look, there is no scene in modern American cinema more heartbreaking in a lot of ways than the scene with Jennifer Jason Lee in the dugout where she loses her virginity. It's just a really painful, painful scene to watch, even to this day. Um, it's, it's, it's a tremendous piece of work. And it reminds me a lot of, um, kind of a lot of, the, uh, it's funny, I think about that particular period. We were very lucky. Because so, after Fast Times is when you get the John Hughes movies, which all really deal with a lot of this in a lot of different ways. More sitcom -y, but also very truthful. And not quite as R-rated. No, as, as but then you had Valley Girl, which right. is very R-rated, yeah. and Last American Virgin, which is the sort of exploitation version right. of what movie. these movies are doing. Which I would think I watched at like a ninth grade slumber party. I saw it at the UA Walnut Hill 6. I'll nice. never forget. But the, the same week I saw, well, around the same period the Valley Girl came out. It's like no one is in that movie, right? Last no. American Virgin, like they just hired people off the street. <laughs> so no, but, Val but, but there's just a lot movie. of really great high school movies during that period. Yeah, Valley Girl's great. Valley Girl, Valley Girl stands the test of It really does. It really holds up uh, in a way that a lot of those movies don't. But then again, I, I think unless you take Heather's Brick uh, which is one of my all-time favorite movies. I think one of the greatest American cinema debuts. Ryan Johnson is going to direct the next Star Wars film, which seems so crazy to me. <laughs> it's the craziest thing. Um, I, I just I think Brick is you know it's a high school movie that's basically a Humphrey Bogart movie or a Dashiell Hammett novel set in high school, modern day high school. Uh, I think that movie does a tremendous job of ex accentuating and underscoring the anguish of high school and adolescence in a way that that Fast Times did in its own way. So there are your school movies to watch. I yeah, nothing but as, angst, as, anguish. As and you uh, send your youngsters well, <laughs> back to school, it doesn't have a lot of angst or, or No, anguish. it really doesn't. That's, that's why I I just that. hope that uh, he passes that test. Absolutely. That Sally Kellerman will help him read some erotic poetry. What do you think of Joyce? Oh, he's great. <laughs> I mean, she's great. I'm sorry, I just bungled <laughs> that one. Uh, I apparently am done. I'm down for the count. So I'll uh, come back next week and uh, school will have started already. So we'll talk about something else. That's right. See you then. Take back that pot thing too.